we never think of uniform, any part of uniform, yeah. as mission critical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter, talking about socks, pants, yeah. and any yeah. protection that it offers, yeah. uh, and how to maintain it. Hi guys, and welcome to another UF Pro Beer 30. I'm here with Darko, and we are talking Hi, today about uh, maintenance of textiles, of garments. What is really needed, and what is just, you know, the bells and whistles, which are total nonsense, which you see a lot in, in the industry. But there is one topic, you know, we are getting every now and then, we are getting returns. Okay. <clears throat> and. Um, if, uh, if I'm looking at some of these returns, then I wonder if these people wash their clothing at all. Oh, this topic. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I know I know it's a sore topic. I know. <laughs> okay, let's um, go. But, it, but I guess what is it really important here is, I mean, to remain practical. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I can imagine that you have limited possibilities uh, to take care about your clothing, to maintain your clothing, wash your clothing. So what do what you usually face when you're, I mean, not in the barracks at home, but when you're out in the field, uh, let's say, maneuvers or really being deployed somewhere? Mali, Afghanistan or yep. any other nice place. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, probably the, the biggest thing we have to face is our own laziness. Okay. That's the first thing. Because uh, <laughs> it is way too easy to stuff your dirty clothes mm. in your uh, one of the compartments of your backpack mm. and forget about them. Mm. It doesn't matter if they're uh, sounds wet, sounds familiar. <laughs> sweaty, uh, mm. muddy, whatever. Yeah. Put them in there, we forget about them, and that's it. And you expect, you think that someone has taken your favorite uh, Gore-Tex jacket away from you because you were looking for it for the last six weeks. There we go, yeah. And you find it all moldy right. after six weeks uh, in right. that pocket that you right. put it in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and... Uh, and then you send it to UF Pro. Um, I mean, normally that's, that's <laughs> yeah. it shouldn't get moldy after Absolutely. six weeks of uh, being... <laughs> Uh, yeah. Stuck wet in a in a yes. in a backpack, of course. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I really like that you expect a lot from us. Yeah, <laughs> I really like that. But I definitely maybe a little bit too much. <laughs> yeah, but uh, getting back to the serious. Yeah, uh, this is this is uh, my experience from the field, mm -hmm. especially in my early days as a as a soldier. Uh, this is what we did. And uh, of course, we came back and we complained about how our Gore-Tex uh, mm. is uh, all leaky and uh, it doesn't work. How uh, we have to throw away our clothes because they, they, they smell funny. They, you can't get rid of the smell. <laughs> uh, or uh, there, there are some weird stains mm. uh, on the, that were never there before yeah. and now they don't come off. Mm. And, uh, and stuff like that, and of course, that all of that yeah. was, uh, especially in the early years, I had to learn the hard way. All of this was because uh, we didn't use the options we had in the field to mm. take <clears throat> care uh, of our uniforms, I th uh, I but we did take care of our weapons. Oh yeah, yeah, that that is that is a point. You know, sometimes you think. You wonder, I mean, you're spending so much time, you're investing so much time about cleaning your gear, mm -hmm. your weapons and everything, but the clothing that is just... No, no, no it's and, just nobody and, thinks and about you, and it. And you know, and you know the clothing is actually, that's your personal first responder. Uh, that's the last layer <laughs> and the first layer of protection that you have against the environment. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, this should be, at least as important as your as your weapon or the other parts of the equipment. I totally agree, and that's something uh, that uh, NCO core uh, should take more emphasis in, in all the militaries mm -hmm. and uh, their equivalents mm -hmm. in the law enforcement. Because uh, uh, 
the, the military does put a lot of uh, emphasis on what to take with you on a mission. Mm -hmm. So what, what parts of a uniform will you take mm -hmm. uh, or what to wear so mm -hmm. not to overheat or anything. But most of the times in the field, we forget that the mm -hmm. story doesn't end here. Yeah. Uh, it's just the beginning and uh, you have to have a plan on how are you going to maintain, maintain your stuff uh, to keep it as dry and as fit for the next uh, time mm. you're going to use it as it, let's say, the situation uh, allows. Mm. Uh, and uh, again, this is uh, probably the main culprit here mm. is going to be the Gore-Tex because that's mm. the piece that you put on and off <clears throat> most of the times. So. Yeah, and I think <clears throat> I think for for clothing, the same statement like for all of your equipment is valid that uh, the better you maintain it, uh, the better it works. Definitely. And the more reliable it is. And uh, textiles, textiles are, I mean, they're in the end, they're very, very, they're, they're made up of very thin fibers. Mm -hmm. And these fibers are put together and then put into a structure and then into a clothing. So at the end, you have a very, very thin fiber and whatever debris is collected in the structure and is not properly washed out or, I mean, taken out of that structure. It yeah. stays there and it, it always abrades the fibers. And oh. once the fibers start to abrade and break, uh, then yeah, uh, they become it's, weaker. It's, it's the beginning it's the beginning of a hole, it's the beginning of a crack, and then at the end you say, okay, well, I got caught by a bush and the bush, uh, the bush caused a tore, uh, a, a rip or a, a hole and broke a rip, uh, mm -hmm. a hole in, in my garment. But it started with that, that the garment was not taken care of properly. Yeah, probably because it wasn't washed. Because it, because it was getting weaker, mm -hmm. you know, it was getting weaker. And then what a lot of people don't know, and I, I mean, I remember my times in the military, you were just wearing one set of uniform for the whole week. Oh, yeah. That's... <laughs> Of it's course, that's standard. normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's that. Nobody told me at that time that textiles need to relax. After mm -hmm. bearing, you need to relax your clothes at least for 12 hours so that they dry out, <clears throat> they relax again. You can significantly prolong the lifetime of your garments if you really relax them between use. Definitely. I mean, and. Uh... If you have the time in the field and if mm. uh, your mission allows it and the situation allows it, you should, pr you should definitely do that. Did I do it? Mm. No. I mean, of course, of course. Did I feel the consequences? Oh, of course you did. <laughs> yes, I did. I mean, clearly, I mean, you wouldn't take a washing machine uh, on, a, on, a record, on a recce mission. Uh, and, not, not yet. But, not, but, they but, don't but, have it in the Humvees yet. <laughs> but when you're back, I mean, we're, we're talking about what you do when you're back. So mm -hmm. when you're back in the barracks, when you have the possibilities, and the ideal thing would be you wash them at the at the temperature and with the program which is on the on the care labels. On the care labels, yeah. Yeah. Each garment has a care label. It's by law. It, it has to be provided with the garment. It's a care label mm -hmm. sewn into the garment. There, it states clearly the temperature at which you should wash it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and probably a couple of other tricks. I know. I remember our time that we were, uh, let's say, the easy deployments uh, mm. like uh, Kosovo. Mm. Uh, there we had issues just like that where we uh, turned in our uh, dirty uniforms uh, to our contractors and of course they washed them at 90 degrees high heat uh, yeah. in and then throw them in the dryer again on high heat they came out a lot shorter uh, the, the the all the <clears throat> camel patterns were uh, faded out yeah it was a disaster and we actually started buying uh, uh, the units started buying uh, their own uh, washing machine so Absolutely. the guys could wash them. Yeah. And uh, what I found out is uh, I have no idea if this helps in any way. It looks like it did. We used to turn them around. Absolutely. Uh, turn them upside, uh, inside, inside out, out. Yep. Uh, before we put them in the washer. Yep. Absolutely. And 
dryer was always on low heat. I mean, you left it there a little bit longer if you had a dryer, but I've, mm. what I found out is the best thing is air dried. Air dried, Just yeah. uh, hang it somewhere if you can't, uh, yeah. leave it on the fresh air. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, even though, we're gonna get even, even though we um, we recommend that, <clears throat> especially garments which have uh, a water repellent treatment on it, mm -hmm. that you put them at a, a mid temperature into the into the tumble dryer. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you reactivate reactivate the the water repellency. Of, oh, okay. Of the well, that's useful. Which is on it. Yeah, uh, but otherwise, of course, you hang it out. You hang it out in the sun and you dry it. But of course, um, there you should also have it uh, turned inside out mm -hmm. because UV light uh, impacts on the colors. You just prolong that yeah. camo pattern color is a little bit longer mm -hmm. uh, and it always turned out good. And there, there, there is another thing, I mean, all, <clears throat> most of the camo patterns have a, an incorporated infrared, um, infrared night vision uh, protection. <clears throat> so you should be careful with the washing powder, the washing de wash detergent that you're using. It shouldn't, mm -hmm. it shouldn't have bleach in it. There shouldn't be any artificial color enhancers. Uh, because I'm sure nobody in Kosovo know about that. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure. I, I think 99% of the people don't know it. Yeah. So these color activators, they actually uh, make sure that in night vision that you're a light green spot. Absolutely. Bleach, I didn't know bleach, that. Bleach the same thing. Bleach the same thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. Most of the people make the mistakes there. I mean, if I want to test a uh, competitor's garments performance under night vision and demonstrate that to somebody, I would wash them in bleach before <laughs> so. and then put them under the night vision yeah, and there we go oh, you make yeah. sure that it shines like a christmas tree but that is a fair point because i remember a lot of times i i came home let's say from uh, uh let's say from exercises in the field or any kind of prolonged training mm -hmm. uh what i did is just threw the clothes into into the designated area where then they disappear magically and they, <laughs> uh, end up uh, folded up, washed in the, in the, in the cupboard. Let or in the yeah, 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 of course, my, my magician wife does that. I don't know how she does it, but I put them there and then they magically reappear somewhere else. <laughs> but uh, you, we never discussed that. And I am pretty sure, I mean, uh, that she used what she had. I Absolutely. mean- Absolutely. Mm. Uh, we never discussed that, that yeah. uh, color enhancers or mm. uh, any kind of det detergent that has bleach mm. in it is not good for the uniforms, And because mm. uh, I didn't know that. You don't see it. You yeah. don't see it. You only see it on the night vision. So, very important, guys, just remember it. Don't use bleach. Don't use uh, uh, detergents with, with artificial color enhancers, so whatever. Uh, th that stuff kills the infrared. Or at least it's, inform your wives. It, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. <clears throat> Not to use that. Yeah. But uh, I think there is, there is also something which you could actually do when you are out in the field just in order to take a little bit care of your clothing. And uh, that is, uh, I mean, loose threads. Check your clothes for loose threads. Yeah, that's something we did with... A loose thread, that's the beginning of a rip, of, of a seam which is mm -hmm. opening up and you can avoid that by... Burning, yeah. Yep. Burning is a very good thing to yep. do. Burning it. Uh, put the dirt out of your Velcros, that's also something which is very important. <clears throat> you learned that with experience, because I never did that. I mean, never. I learned the hard way mm -hmm. that it's a very good idea to clean the... <clears throat> The Velcro, because uh, mm. especially on the loop end, uh, it just stuff gets caught in, and yeah. the Velcro doesn't work anymore. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. And for the washing, definitely close your Velcros when you're when you're washing, mm -hmm. because in the washing machine they will catch everything which is uh, coming close. That that's also my. And you take it away from it, and it's the beginning of. Uh, you know, a fluffy surface on the text month. Mm -hmm. well, this is something I also learned the hard way. Uh, oh, we, I, all, we all did. Yeah. We all, and, and we still do. Especially name I tags. 
I always uh, took my name tags off and everything, put them in the washer. Of course, uh, the, the soft parts of Velcro mm -hmm. just became fluffy and, I mean, it's a mess. Yeah. Uh, it, it just starts like blooming on your uniform. Mm -hmm. Uh, but after a while, uh, after a couple of times when I left them on by accident, mm -hmm. I saw that this is but actually preventing that to happen. Really? Yeah. Oh. And cool. so I left them on. Okay. So I always left my name tags on. That's a very good recommendation. Right. Yeah. Um, you mentioned before Gore-Tex. I think what most of the people are not aware of is that this performance that you expect from Gore-Tex to be waterproof, to be breathable, that this is due to a very thin and fine membrane which is sandwiched into, in, in between two layers of fabric. So it's mm -hmm. in between, you don't see it. <clears throat> but of course, when you're, when you're outside and you're wearing Gore-Tex, of course, outside, um, then um, you have dirt which is um, uh, mounting in the structure of the fabric. Oh yeah, so I, it's yeah. in the structure. So so you're you're collecting whatever like getting dust, from rubbing dust. on your uh, and, and and that stuff. Then I mean, with the rucksack on top or with uh, your plate carrier body, yeah. body armor, it's really rubbed through the structure and then through the membrane. And once it is th is through the membrane, uh, it leaves micro damages. And these micro damages are leakages. As good as Gore-Tex is, but uh, it's mechanical le uh, leakages, which are, it's, it's, almost, it's almost the end of the garment. I totally understand. And I, you probably wouldn't like my answer if you asked me how many times did I wash my backpack or my shoulder straps. Yeah. I'm not even gonna go into how many times I washed my uh, Body armor or yeah, of course you carrier. Don't. Of course you don't. No? But what you could do is you could wash your Gore-Tex, or I mean, you don't you don't even have to wash it with a detergent. But you know, you just have to make sure that this debris, that this sand, that this uh, micro contamination gets out of the structure. So you could wash it just with water, or you. Yep. Put it in the river and you, you just get rid of the... And what we did in Afghanistan actually, uh, where there's that really fine, uh, we call it moon dust, mm -hmm. really fine sand. Uh, after each time we came back, uh, we stopped, let's say at our maintenance bay, I used an air gun oh. to air ourselves off, just to get that yeah. All of that off, absolutely, uh, and of course from our weapons and uh, from our clothes, and that I'm pretty sure it helped quite extensively because uh, uh, at least we didn't have that uh, when you when you let's say you gave it to the contractors for washing mm -hmm. and everything else, you when you got it back if you didn't like air dry it, uh, air blow it, it came back like like uh, like sandpaper. Oh. A little bit, but if you did that, it came back nice. And okay. I mean, probably mm -hmm. because you, uh, that was the thing that we got the uh, moon dust off. You got the moon dust off. Yeah, that, that's one thing we did uh, is uh, after every time we came back, mm. we... Cool, that's cool. We did that. Yeah. And uh, you have that usually in the camp. Well, you just gotta be a, a good buddy with the maintenance guys, and every maintenance bay uh, has a compressor with a with a air gun because uh, they need it for whatever they need it for. Yeah. And uh, sure. you, you stop there; it takes a couple of minutes. Mm. Just air dry, uh, air blow yourself every, mm. everything off with the weapons, and uh, works perfectly. Mm. I mean, getting back to the Gore-Tex, the worst uh, particle contamination you're getting in salt water. <clears throat> so salt water, salt water, salt okay. water the, the salt crystals, they will accumulate in, in your fabric structure and they are needle sharp. They're, they're, okay. they're so sharp, it doesn't take a week until you damage your precious Gore-Tex garment if you don't clean it. So mm. do like you do also with your, with your dry suit, uh, uh, with your diving equipment, put it into into fresh, fresh water. water. Put okay. it into fresh water. Rinse rinse it thoroughly in fresh water and try to get the the, the, the salt out. I never knew that. Yeah, 
I would right. never think of that. I yeah. was just, salt water is like my sweat. Yeah. Okay. Here you have it, sweat. <clears throat> so yeah. sweat, I mean, how much are we sweating into clothing? So therefore, again, you know, wash your clothes, get, get these crystals out. And then in, in the sweat, you have also certain oils. Mm -hmm. So whatever is bad for the textile should not stay there. <clears throat> it should not remain there for longer than, than a couple of hours, ideally. Mm -hmm. Because it starts to degrade. Usually, I mean, there is so much reserve built in, in, in the fabric, in the, in the textile, that it takes some time until you get real damage. But you can be sure that whatever gets into that structure and uh, doesn't belong there is going to wear it, wear it down. Yeah, uh, and it is a thing that uh, no, nobody look, looks at. I mean, like we talked at the beginning, I mean, we all maintain our vehicles, we all maintain our weapons, uh, we all maintain our comms and everything else. Just uniforms, it's... Usually, like I said, I mean, you bring it home, they magically reappear uh, yeah. in your cupboard yeah. or wherever you store them, uh, thanks to all the wives. Uh, and that's it. Uh, but through the years and uh, through experience, and let's say a bad experience, uh, what I've learned also is that uh, I know this what I'm gonna say next is kind of like against army regulation, but if you uh, store your clothes, even when they're uh, clean and everything, on the hanger, so they're aired out and everything, usually it's a lot better than if they're folded up yeah. nicely in an mm -hmm. A4 format in yeah. your locker. Yeah. Sometimes that turns could turn bad, uh, because the moisture and everything, maybe in the room or whatever, but if they're... It stays in there. Yeah, if they're the hanged pack. on the hanger... That's better. They're mm -hmm. gonna drive. Uh, air, air yeah, circulation. and air circulation just Absolutely. helps maintain them yeah. uh, when, uh, even when clean. Mm. Which brings me to the, uh, to the thermal insulation garments. I mean, mm -hmm. there it is really important that they should be, you know, on, on, a, on a hanger, mm -hmm. uh, not compressed, because uh, if they are compressed over a longer time, then the thermal insulation is just going down. Oh, so, yeah. absolutely important for thermal insulation garments. Don't pack them or put something heavy on it. You're really reducing and impacting the, on the thermal insulation. Of um, course, yeah. yeah. Now so, that I think about it, yeah. And, and keeping those those uh, garments, precious garments, in in your backpack is not a good idea. To, yeah. to keep them for a longer time. I mean, of course, for the mission, that's clear. Um, and that is also usually what they what they can take. I mean, a couple of hours in the backpack, three three four days, that's okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but don't leave them there for the whole summer uh, and take them out in the winter again. Um, and what which brings us to our next, uh, let's say, uh, my next experience is uh, uh, back in the days, I mean, we had those uh, uh, backpacks, let's say emergency packs that we always mm -hmm. had to have ah. packed uh, mm -hmm. uh, by the packing list. Uh, what I found out or, I mean, in my experience, that's probably for all the military out there is uh, maybe this is not so necessary because uh, I mean I understand the quick reaction forces and everything yeah. but that's something when you're deployed once you're in the barracks uh, somewhere next to your hometown or wherever in country uh, maybe they should reconsider that because uh, a lot of the clothes that you keep in there I can tell you from my experience, I left it in there sometimes even for a couple of months. Mm. Didn't take them out. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't want to, because I, my backpack was always nicely packed mm. and I always had mm -hmm. my packing ready to go. Yeah, checked out. So my NCOs didn't yeah. smoke the hell out of me. <laughs> uh, of course. But that's probably not a good idea because you, it, it, our military, 
even law enforcement does not react like at a moment's notice anymore. You always have some, let's say, pre-indications to prepare. So some of, let's say, like mm. winter gear, <clears throat> maybe they should consider uh, having them close at hand, mm. but not tightly packed somewhere I mean, uh, uh, in uh, the backpack. Another, another option would be that you just repack them once a week. But you don't do it. Laziness, like you mentioned before, it's the laziness. That's you the could, problem. You could repack them every week, and you could put, take the stuff that you had before in there and put the, the other gear. Because of most of the most of the items, you don't get just one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so you have three, four, five nobody pairs of that. pants. <laughs> huh? I, nobody did that. Yeah, of course nobody did it. Yeah, of course, like, it's the laziness. Like you said, yeah, laziness yeah, is. It's the laziness. Uh, uh, yeah, but that's uh, that, that is something to consider because, of course, your uh, all your re insulation. I mean, after a couple of months in the summertime, if somebody says in the packing list you have to have a let's say a, wi uh, uh, a winter gear or something that has insulation, you're going to leave it there for the whole summer. True. If you're not going to have an ex inspection, yeah, and it's going to stay in there if the NCO says it has to be in the packing list, and uh, yeah. that is something mm. uh, to consider. Yeah. Mm. If that's a good point, yeah, but maintaining uniforms, usually you learn it the hard way yes. uh, when you mess up quite a lot of times that mm. uh, this is a thing mm. that needs to be considered mm. uh, pre, mid and post mission. Yeah, uh, And it doesn't matter which branch uh, of a uniform you fall under or even the private sector, but yeah. yeah. Absolutely. There is something to mm. consider, and there's very mm. variable things to point out, like mm. we said, like the uh, infrared uh, properties. Uh, Question: uh, Do you have a? Did you have a sewing kit in in your? In we did. We did. Uh, did you take it with you? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> no, we did. No, I'm joking. Uh, mm. We did. That's probably one of, one of the things that was always. Uh, yeah. At least with me, I remember that most of my soldiers had it. Yeah. Uh, rarely I had a soldier without it. The issue that be rose up is the how many times did we use it? Yeah. I mean, I just think it's a good idea that if you detect, if you're out, if you detect there is already a, a hole in your mm -hmm. in your pants. Little, little hole. Mm -hmm. You you can be sure that that little hole by the end of the mission will be a big hole. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> whenever you see a hole, take your needle out and take take the five minutes and just just sew it sew, up. Sew it up. Uh, I mean, you can have, it doesn't need to be nice, but whatever is already ripped, even if you have a rip stop fabric, mm -hmm. it will it it will continue to rip. So. And that is something that we, we definitely didn't do. And uh, I, I, coming back to those I, laziness, I know everybody waited till it became like a a, a very big rip in yeah. your, and then right. when you came back to the fob or cob or whatever, somewhere safe. Mm. If the law guys didn't hook you up with a new pair of pants or something mm. or a new pair of uniform, you sew it up. But by then it was like a foot long. And it look horrible. And yeah, <laughs> this is something that we sh that's definitely worth doing is taking those five minutes and uh, if you have, if the mission permits, and uh, sure. plug sure. that Absolutely. hole when it's nice and small yeah. instead of when it's a big rip because yeah. uh, our sewing abilities were not that good. Of course, <laughs> of course, yeah. But you know, you don't have to make a, a, a surgical seam or you know, it doesn't have to be nice. It's just it just has to make sure that it stays together and that it doesn't uh, continue to rip. Definitely, and it's a lot easier to do it when the hole is like this. Absolutely. When, instead of when it's like right, this. So, right. Right. Yeah, that is a very good point, and sad to say. Uh, Usually we didn't do it, and it's something we should do. Mm. It. Same with a, with a seam that starts to open. I mean, at the end, this is, it's not undestructible, even though UF Pro garments are expensive, I understand that. <clears throat> There's a reason for it, um, but it's not undestructible. So people Nothing should, is. Be, people should be, should be really, 
I mean, they should be aware of it that everything can break. Textiles can break. They are not made like a tank. Um, if you see something that starts to starts to rip, then just sew it. A seam that sh starts to open up, just sew it. I mean, just just make sure that it's not continuing to rip. Mm -hmm. You don't have to sew it until the end. Just, I mean, if I, have a, if I have a seam which is that much open and I don't have time, I just make here a stop, uh, a, stop mm -hmm. a stop seam, here yeah. a stop seam, and then with this it's secured, it's not going to open up again. Anymore, uh -huh. yeah. okay. So I don't have idea. to sew it the whole way. So yeah. just, just make just sure. Just on the edges? Just at the edges, just make a bar tag in there, sew it for a couple of times up, and then it doesn't rip a, it doesn't continue to continue to open up mm. easy. Yeah, uh, I think that uh, the uniform is, or, or let's say the garments uh, are most underestimated, underestimated uh, yeah. piece of equipment uh, in the uniform part of the world. Uh, and uh, most of the people don't consider it a mission critical yeah. gear because it's just self-explanatory yeah. that you don't go naked. Yeah, yeah. But uh, this is something that we, sh that uh, military law enforcement and, and the private sector should do. I mean, uniform, at the end of the day, it is mission critical uh, equipment. Sure. As, as you stated uh, at first, I mean, this is the first uh, and the last yeah. layer of your defense against your skin. I mean, if you take out the, from let's say from the elements, if you take out the, the body armor and everything yeah. else, I mean, you don't wear body armor on your legs, mm -hmm. or at least I didn't see nobody. I, I give you a very simple example, and that was <clears throat> the Second World War, Singapore. Mm -hmm. fall, okay. of Singa fall of Singapore. Um, the if you, if you look at the, the, the British soldier there, what mm -hmm. he was wearing, and if you look at the Chi Japanese soldier, what he was wearing. Oh, well, and yeah. they were fighting in the jungle. So the British soldier had uh, shorts. shorts. They had shorts. But they were and comfortable. They were super comfortable, but I think I heard something that 30 to 40% of the troops that they had to take out of battle was due to infections caused by scratches. Uh, yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, that gives you a very clear direction. Protect your skin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you get an infection. If you get an infection in jungle, in jungle warfare, this is, the, this is the beginning of the end. Yeah, that, that's a knockout blow for, for yeah. that soldier. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, okay, you have today, you have antibiotics, but if you don't have them, <clears throat> you have a problem. Well, even if you have antibiotics, you have to take that soldier out. Uh, sure. Uh, use your resources to to get him uh, in the uh, in the hospital yeah. and everything else, and to yeah. treat him. Mm. And uh, the Japanese, instead, they wore thick. Of course, in the beginning, you would say they are uncomfortable because they're warm. Yeah, but they were really protecting themselves. They they had these gaiters, these. Uh, uh, oh, okay. I don't know how you call them in English. Uh, these uh, in German we call them Wickelgamaschen. Uh, so it was really wool that they were mm -hmm. okay. uh, 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 wrapping around their the, the lower part of the legs to protect just, their legs just from those kind of cuts and everything. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, and that's probably why they won with such inferior forces. Yeah. And this is just another point that uh, just puts an emphasis on uh, how mission critical absolutely can, uh, uniform can Absol be. And, absolutely, uh, there's mean, a reason I, more I, to. I, I would have another example it. that has nothing to do with maintenance, but it's also interesting to see how mission critical it is. <coughs> Falkland, Falkland War. Okay. Yeah. Thirty percent of the British soldiers had to be taken out of battle because of trench foot. Oh, really? Yep. 30%. So you I never you, knew that. You you bring them half around the world to get into battle and then 30% of them you have to take out because they didn't wear proper footwear and they got trench foot. So, and trench foot so, sucks. And trench foot sucks. I mean, you leave the battlefield. <laughs> yeah, you have one less rifle and one less soldier on the field. 30%. 
So you see wow, how, how, I mission, never knew that. how mission critical clothing is. Uh, definitely, all these points br bring it out, and it's probably the most neglected yeah. thing uh, when it comes to maintenance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I definitely know uh, I had to learn the hard way that uh, maintenance on your uniform has to be done right. If not else, mm. you're gonna be wet. Oh yeah. And the only thing that uh, that the, or the only reason that you're wet is because you didn't take care of your Gore-Tex yeah. as you should be. Yeah. Yeah. And and, uh, and, at, and the, at the end, it, it, I, I hear quite a lot of times, ah, the Gore-Tex doesn't work. It didn't work. It, well, yeah, that, that was my excuse. Of yeah, course, yeah, it, did, it, it didn't work. Okay. Just a sucky Gore-Tex. I mean, whenever we are getting claims about Gore-Tex, there is micro perforation is the reason for it. Mm -hmm. And, and beginning. that's because of that dirt that we were absolutely. talking about before, Absol yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. We were, uh, at the times when I was still working at Gore-Tex, we were in evaluating, um, it was the German military, we were evaluating uh, their Gore-Tex kit, um, and we got, after three months, almost all the garments had microperforation. Yep, I, I could because totally of that, understand. Because of that. Yeah. I mean, not just because of that. There is also other reasons for microperforation. But dirt in the structure, that's that's reason number one. I, I can totally get the point. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, based on my experience, what we did, we, or what I did with our Gore-Tex, yeah. uh, it's... Um, yeah. I'm kind of surprised it hold, uh, hold together at all. Um, <laughs> and we still do it. And uh, it's, it, it is, we still do it. Uh, we never, th like we said, we never think of uniform, any part of uniform yeah. as mission critical. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter, talking about socks, pants, yeah. and any yeah. protection that it offers yeah. uh, and how to maintain it. Okay. So this is the mission for, for this beer 30. Take care of your clothes, uh, because then they take care of you. I think I think we we delivered the message. Hopefully, hopefully yeah. you understood. Um, Educate your wives. We were <laughs> we were absolutely happy to share this information with you, and we hope that you check in uh, in one of our next beer thirties. Yeah. Take care. See you. Bye. Cheers.